Hello, Empowered Warriors. Welcome to episode 41. I can't wait to deliver this to you today because it's near and dear, not only to my heart, but you probably don't realize it yet, but it's going to be near and dear to your heart. And that is because so many of us are walking around out of alignment and maybe not fully realize it. So I talk about this, I dive deep. I do go into some of my personal experiences because I feel that it is important to share with you the backstory in order to share with you what the message of this is. And basically the message is, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And if there is something that you need to let go of, what is holding you back from doing that? This is a very heart-centered episode. I have been going through a lot of transformation personally. So I kind of put my heart on a sleeve here in this episode and I hope that you enjoy it. So warriors, stay tuned. Welcome to the Empowered Warrior Podcast. My name is Angela Noel and I am an intuitive coach, acupuncturist, and Chinese herbalist. This podcast is all about empowerment, meaning how you can maintain your personal power in order to have the best life beyond your imagination. An empowered warrior is someone who has the identity of a person who is healthy, radiant, and free from all suffering, and has the tools ready and available to move through life's obstacles with confidence, ease, and a sense of freedom. In this podcast, I bring over 16 years experience in Chinese medicine, countless years of self-development, and a passion for helping others find their personal power. I will be discussing just a few of my favorite topics regarding health from a Chinese medicine perspective, brain habits, and spirituality, so that you can quickly pave your pathway to freedom and be free from the chains that have kept you stuck. My intention with this podcast is to serve as a guide for warriors who want to form a healthy foundation of body, mind, and spirit, and sustain it by changing who they are being from the inside and having a stronger connection to their higher selves. My goal is to help students end the unnecessary suffering that they place on themselves by having poor health habits, negative thought loops, and a lack of self-worth. I'm so happy that you're here. Hello, Empowered Warriors. How are you? Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly candid here. This is like the fifth take I am doing on this podcast episode. And for some reason, I am struggling with getting the content out there. And so I am going to do this last and final take. And if it becomes an episode, great, you will be on the receiving end. And if it doesn't, that is also okay. I am surrendering and I am leaning into the fact that if it's not feeling good, I don't do it which may or may not be a podcast in the future, I have a lot to share with you about what's been going on with me personally, but I'm not quite ready to share it yet because I haven't fully processed it yet, to be perfectly honest. But I'm going to leave you with this tip, okay? If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And I know it's so simple, but so many times we we as human beings get caught up in making things really complicated and really hard and we do these things that we don't enjoy doing for whatever reason we feel obligated or because we feel guilty or shameful or whatever it is okay but i'm here to tell you today that if there's something that's going on in your life and you don't feel good about it Okay, and it's your life is not on the line. Okay, no one's going to die as a result of you letting this go. Let it go. Let it go. So 
when you continue to hold on to things out of fear of change or fear of giving something it up something up I see this a lot with the people that I work with who have jobs that they hate you know the the soul sucking jobs and it makes me so sad when I hear people talking about their soul sucking job and I want to remind you on the side that it's not necessarily the job that's sucking out your soul it is your choice to stay in that job that is sucking your soul, right? And it is your choice to allow that job to suck your soul. And I had a lot of ideas of what I wanted to talk about. And honestly, warriors, I was not getting the clarity. The clarity has not been coming through about what to share with you today. But I wanted to start off with, first of all, acknowledging the fact that I did not put a podcast out yesterday, or excuse me, I didn't put a podcast out last week because I was not, it turned out, okay, I didn't realize this right away, but it turned out that I was not feeling in alignment with that little challenge that I was trying to tell you about in the previous two episodes. It just wasn't feeling good. And every time I went to prepare for it, I, it it just was feeling out of alignment. It was not bringing me joy. It was not bringing me fulfillment. And I decided, all right, well, I guess there's not going to be a podcast this week because it's not feeling good. And what came as a result of letting that go? All right, I'm going to share with you a few things that happened last week. It was really powerful. And I'm, I'm sharing with you because I think it might help some of you out there. So I didn't put a podcast out. I let my VA go. And I let my VA go as a result of waking up and realizing I don't necessarily know if I want to offer coaching in this capacity anymore. And as I'm saying this, I'm like, oh, I wasn't going to share that. And here I am sharing it. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that. But what I'm basically doing is paying attention and basically going over with a fine tooth comb everything that I'm doing with in my life. And if it's not feeling good, if it's not feeling in alignment, if it doesn't bring me joy, and I, as a side note, I love my VA, like she was freaking amazing. But right now, it's not the time for me to have a VA. And when it's time for me to have a VA later on, I would certainly bring her back. She's very busy, if she would take me back. So if you're listening, it's nothing personal. And you know that you know, I love you. So, so that happened. Um, The spring equinox happened on Saturday. And if this is TMI, too bad. I got my period. And I'm 49 years old. And for the last two years, my period has not been as regular as normal. So it sometimes is like a trickle and barely comes and sometimes it doesn't come at all so this particular period happened I think Thursday or Friday before so the equinox was on a Saturday and my period came I think Thursday or Friday right before the equinox and let me just tell you warriors that this was a period of release okay now I promise you not too much TMI But let's just say that it was the period of a 16-year-old. It reminded me of the periods I used to get when I was a teenager. And I know that there are hormonal changes happening in my body. I'm not one to really put myself in any cubbyhole or any kind of limitations. I know this is happening. But I also felt that this particular period the way it happened and when it happened was this really beautiful thing because I was freaking shedding and letting go of so many things last week. And it turns out because I'm in this moon circle with these other women, um, this goddess moon circle with one of my mentors, Aishal, and she was talking about how equinoxes are this time of releasing and shedding and letting go of literally letting go of things that don't serve you so whether they be belongings or thoughts or behaviors 
or old habits, whatever it is, stuck energy. That's why spring cleaning often feels so good to us when we do it because you're literally clearing out the junk, the junk that doesn't serve you. So after that call, and there's been this thing, I think I told you in a previous episode, I really, I think it was a full, a full or a new moon back in the fall, I really felt called to get rid of my old journals, journals that had gone back to my college days of my early 20s. I mean, some of these were super old. So I did that in the fall. And that felt really good. And I had this fire ceremony. And it was really fun because I got to go through the the journals and see this version of myself that existed when I was in my 20s. And it was really cool, actually, because, you know, we often, I don't know if, if this happens to you, but we often limit ourselves as a, as a species, as humans, we limit ourselves. And, you know, I always thought that when I was in, when I think of myself as a 20 something year old, I thought of myself as being this naive person that didn't really know anything. And when I read these journal entries, I was blown away by the stuff I was talking about. I was talking about being awake versus being asleep and these spiritual books that I read. I mean, it w- I was blown away by these. I, I got these visions. I I, I, ha- I used to have these, when I smoked pot in particular, I used to get these visions of these tapestries, like these interchanging tapestries as I was trying to go, go to sleep. And it's just so amazing to go back and read this stuff. So I read, I wrote down what I thought was really important to save, and then I burned those journals. Okay. And I can't tell you how freeing and how good and liberating it felt to do that. So for this equinox, what I really wanted to do and what was coming through and feeling alive and important to do was to get rid of my photo albums. And (laughs) I kept looking for months and months, I was looking at my photo albums. And I was like, gosh, you know, should I shouldn't I and Honestly, I, I was looking at them and realized I just don't want them anymore. I don't want that old energy in my life anymore. I don't want to be, and not that I had, I've had a really good life. I had a really good experience in college. I had good friends. But the, there was a version that I was a version of myself in my 20s, especially in college, And so many of us, I don't know too many people that actually want to go back to college and and be in their 20s. Maybe some people do. I would never want to go back there. But I was just ready to just shed and release because I am really feeling strongly that I'm growing into this new version of myself and that it was really, really important to energetically release those photo albums. So that's what I did. I got off of the goddess moon circle call or the goddess equinox call and I went downstairs and I didn't, I had something that I needed to do right after. So I just really quickly spent 15 or 20 minutes going through five or six of my photo albums and I saved maybe 10 pictures, you know, 10 pictures, not a lot. And I tossed the rest in the garbage. So why am I telling you this? I don't even know, honestly, warriors. I told you, I, 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 I did tell you this in the beginning, did I not, that I really didn't know where I was going with this episode. I guess what I want to drive home to you is that when something is not feeling good anymore, and for some reason you're holding on to it because you feel like, oh, this is just something that you don't do. Like, for the longest time, I believed, you don't throw away your photos, you keep them forever and ever until you die. And then when somebody's cleaning out your house, they look through your own, your old photos and they take your photos and save what they want to save. And I call bullshit on all of that stuff, honestly. You know, like who came up with that rule? Now, if you're somebody that wants to save your photo albums, that's great. Okay, I'm not, this is not me telling you what to do. Okay, but if you're someone that really wants to live 
in a way that feels authentic and by getting rid of certain things in your life, even if it's considered taboo to do it, then do it. Because let me tell you, I haven't pers- I have not brought the photo albums to the trash yet because I live in a town where I have to go to the dump. So I haven't gone to the dump yet to throw out the photo albums, but there was this feeling of freedom when I did that. There was this feeling of freedom and clarity that came through as a result of doing that. And let me just tell you, after, between letting go of my VA and declaring a few things that, okay, I'm just going to let you, I'm going to let you in on this, okay, because then it will make sense. So what I realized is that the way that I'm coaching people may or may not be in alignment with my dharma, with my higher purpose anymore. And I was having a conversation with some friends and I'm like, I I really don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, what am I doing? Why am I holding, again, why am I holding on to this thing that doesn't feel like it's in alignment anymore? Why am I doing this? Like, what, what do I have to prove? Same thing with a podcast. It wasn't feeling good to do the series. So what do I have to prove? Why do I feel like I need to continue doing this when it's not necessary, right? And no one's going to suffer as a result of me not doing it. So I started to declare to my friends and to my moon circle goddesses that this is a possibility that I may let go of coaching, or at least coaching in the way that I have been coaching for the last few years. I also knew that I don't want to return to having a, having an acupuncture practice anymore. Like that ship has sailed. I'm done. And not, you know, I loved doing it when I did, but I know that it's not my higher purpose to be doing acupuncture much longer, to be doing acupuncture anymore. And what I really want to be doing and what brings me joy right now is getting in touch with my creative outlet. And the big one for me is writing. So I started to declare this to my friends and to my, you know, goddess friends. And just the act warriors of letting go of things that I thought I needed to hold on to, letting go of the photographs, letting go of my VA, even though I really wanted to keep her, I just knew it was for the best of the business. It was for the best of my higher alignment to let go of these things. And what happened as a result was this beautiful opening. And I had people reach out to me saying that it was basically one of the people that reached out to me was somebody who coaches entrepreneurs on getting published and getting on stage, which is exactly what I want to do, is write a book and get on stage. And then the other thing that happened is another person reached out to me and said, once I you know, publicly shared my truth that I wanted to be an author, that I wanted to write books, that I wanted to be a writer. I had another woman write, reach out to me saying, I, ha- I just have this feeling that at some point we're going to work together. I don't know when, I don't know if we are actually going to work together. But in listening to you talk about being a writer, I just had this feeling. And Warriors... I shit you not, okay? You can't make this shit up about the divinity that happens when you choose to let go of things. And it may be a matter of you openly marketing this so that for all to hear, or it could just be a matter of you gradually becoming more into alignment to who you truly are where your energy changes so much that you are vibrating at the same level as the people that need your help, as the people that want to be in your energy and learn from you. 
So just because it's considered taboo to write in a book or to throw out old photographs or to throw out your journals or whatever it is that you are resisting letting go of in your life because you're like, oh, I could never do that. Like, what if I need it? But there's this part of you and you know deep down that you need to do this for yourself. I invite you to ask yourself, what is causing you to hold on to this belief or to this item or to this old habit that you are having a hard time letting go of? What is causing you to hold on to this, whatever it is? And what is the cost of you? What is the long-term cost of you continuing to hold on to something that you know deep down needs to go? So it may be, I've been talking about journals and pictures, but it may be a relationship that needs to go. And that is something that only you will know. You know, the toxic relationship, it could be with somebody that you're related to. And, oh, you know, oh no, it's taboo to let somebody like that go in your life. And I'm not here to tell you, (laughs) I am not here to tell you that you need to let go of somebody in your life. Okay. I'm just using that as an example because there are so many things, there are so many beliefs that are, are that we're programmed with about what is right and what is wrong and what should we what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And I want to remind you warriors that this wasn't decided by you. This was decided by somebody else. And it was a belief that was put into your belief system a long, long time ago when you were growing up by your, either it's your parents or your, your church or your, your neighbors, who, who have you, okay? doesn't matter that this is how you're supposed to believe. So when you were born, you, were, you, come, into this, you come to this planet pure and open and knowing that anything is possible. You don't have beliefs. You don't have limiting beliefs. You don't self-hate. You don't have issues with your self-esteem, all of that comes as a result of your programming. So basically, I invite you to consider, you know, what beliefs are you holding on to right now that are not yours, that are not serving you anymore? And chances are any belief that you have right now that is not serving you, that is causing you to believe that you're not good enough or that you shouldn't do certain things or that this is right and the other thing is wrong, chances are that is not coming from you. That is coming from something that you were taught when you were young. So what are those beliefs you're holding on to? Maybe it has to do with money. You know, as you know, I talk about money and financial abundance all the time because there's so much stigma about money. And this is not a money episode, but as you probably already know, what shows up in your bank account is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of you, your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions. So if you're hating on yourself all the time and you believe deep down, Maybe it's not something that's like a conscious belief. It could be very subconscious that you're not good enough to receive financial abundance, for example. Right? That is going to come out in the little tiny micro habits, the little tiny things that you say to yourself every day that you may or may not even be aware that you're doing. Like I've talked really openly about how after I thought I let go of so many limiting beliefs about myself, that when I finally let go of like the big ones, you know, and I was starting to really feel freedom again, then it just went in a little bit deeper into the subconscious. And I realized I was catching myself in these really destructive patterns of self-talk that were really, they were almost like these little whispers that I didn't, even know was playing in the background. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't even aware that this was playing in the background. It was so, so quiet. And as I became more and more aware, I noticed it more and more. So I was able to work my magic and move my attention and do all the things. But warriors, the reason why I'm getting on here and talking about this is 
so much of what you're doing and going when you go about your your day-to-day life and the ways that you're limiting yourself have nothing to do with you. So I would love for you, as a result of listening to this episode, to get out your journal and do some writing. And I would like for you to answer these journal prompts. First of all, and you might want to do some meditation or, you know, kind of prepare yourself, light a candle, pull some cards, get grounded, whatever works for you to get really into that zone of discovering your inner truth. So do that. Give yourself some time. You don't want to rush this exercise. And allow whatever wisdom needs to come to come. So first of all, I would ask yourself, what is it? What is one belief? And I really think it's a good idea to do this one belief at a time. And give yourself, it doesn't have to be done in one day. It could be done over the course of a couple weeks or a couple months. Take your time with this, okay? Start with one belief. One, what is one belief that I'm holding on to that is not mine, that is not serving me? Okay, so for example, I do not deserve to have a good relationship. Like so many people believe that, that they, should, they do not deserve X, Y, and Z. So write it down, write down the prompt. What is the belief that I'm holding on to that no longer serves me? Write everything down and then journal. Just allow your free flow of conscious to come through. Whatever it is, okay? Even if it doesn't make sense, even if you're finding that you're, you're writing things that are like gibberish, just allow your brain to relax into the journaling exercise and allow whatever words to come through to come through. And then the second, ask yourself, where does this belief come from? So it's important to know where this comes from because chances are if you start to realize where these beliefs are coming from, it's probably not just one belief, right? And you can start to become more and more aware. So I want you to do this not because I want you to blame right? Like, oh, I believe this because my mother told me this. No, that's not what this is about. This is all about creating awareness because there are going to be more limiting beliefs that are going to come through that you need to process. So it's kind of good to be at least just be aware, okay? But don't go any further than that. It's just a matter of, of being aware of where it comes from. Third is you want to consider where you're going to be in a year from now, if you continue to hold on to this belief. And if, you know, maybe it, maybe not a year from now, maybe it's six months from now, maybe it's three months from now. But really just give yourself some time to consider where are you going to be in a year if you continue to hold on to these beliefs. And then, lastly, I invite you to do a little releasing ceremony. Okay, actually, before that, number four, I want you to create your new story. Okay, so, so much about subconscious reprogramming and shifting identity is about making that choice to choose the identity of the person you need to be in order to have the things that you want. So the reason why so many people don't get what they want, you probably have heard me talk about this before, is because they're operating from their point A, their old identity that they were basically born and raised with, and not their point B, the person that they want to become. So who is that point B? Who does she need to be? Okay, what are her values? Because this all comes down to values. Just really just let go and and write and write and really just allow what needs to come through to come through here. And then the next thing I would like for you to do is to take that part of the journal exercise where you really were able to see where this was all coming from, the limiting beliefs, the stories. And I would like for you to let that go. Okay, so... 
This is where you turn on your favorite music. You can crumple up the, the piece of paper in a little ball if you want to have a fire ceremony. Whatever releasing means to you. Now, some people like to hold on to their journal journal entries because they like to see how far they've come. So whatever makes sense to you. For, for me, I like to purge, okay? I like to safely light my journals on fire every once in a while. But whatever makes sense to you, okay? Maybe it's just throwing it in the trash. Maybe it's ripping it up. Maybe it's putting it in your fireplace or the campfire. I don't know. But just do it safely. Be responsible. Or it could just be an energetic release, like being really intentional about letting it go. And then my favorite part is movement and dance. So either go out for a, a nice hike outside. You want to basically move your body and you want to move this, this stuck energy, this crud out of your cells and out of your body. Okay, so I invite you to dance, put on some of your favorite music, something that it has to be something that makes you feel really amazing when you do it. Okay, so a song that you love that makes you feel really high vibe or a walk or just putting your face in the sun. I really encourage you though to move your body. So if you're putting your face in the sun, just make sure you're walking or doing something. Setting the intention that you are releasing, you're actually watching this energy leave your system. And lastly, warriors, have fun with it. Have fun with it. So I'd love to know, for those of you that try this out, how this works for you. So send me a message on Instagram at I am Angela Noel. Let me know what you let go of. In particular, this is the greatest time to do it because it is, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the spring. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the fall. Any change of season is an opportunity to let go of stuff that no longer serves you. So let me know how you did. I love you so much. And until next time, warriors, just continue being bold, continue staying in integrity and working on your inner alignment so that you can have the life that you want. And until next time, take care. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Empowered Warrior Podcast. It is an honor and a privilege to have you as a listener. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast and would like to help others pave their pathway to freedom and their disempowerment and suffering and become an empowered warrior, please share this podcast with your friends and family. Also, it is my intention to help humanity grow and evolve to their highest potential. So if you really enjoy what you're hearing, please help me spread the word by leaving a review in iTunes. Thank you again, and I am so grateful to be able to serve you in this very exciting way.